What's up, YouTube? So I'm back with another Subaru. I've got a, I believe it's a 2007 uh, Impreza hatch, five speed. Uh, it's a, it doesn't have a lot of, it's not a high mileage car. Car drives down the road really nicely. Uh, feels really good, it's in good shape. But uh, she's got a complaint of a, a wheel bearing type noise is how they explained it. Um, it just all of a sudden comes on and it and it's there for a while uh... they explain that it's quite deep sounding and um, it happens well, that's kind of what i was told in the beginning so i went for a drive in it and i didn't really get any significant noise out of it i'm not getting any bearing noise that i could tell anyway so i i backed it up onto the uh... ramps and I, i've cut kind of had a, just a look under underneath the back of the car I had it in on the front had a look underneath the front I'm not really finding any issues um, so I've just I just uh, just got a text back and forth and I got a little better description and uh, it, apparently I've got to go, go for a good drive down the highway and at some point down the highway the noise starts happening so um, that, that's not not very normal for a bearing. Usually, a bearing just progressively gets louder and louder and louder the fastest it, faster it's turning. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna load the camera in the car. We're gonna go for a test drive. I'm just gonna try and listen to it again and see if I can hear the noise that they're talking about, or if I can just kind of make my own determination on what might be going on. Okay, I've got you guys set up. Just gonna open the garage door and away we go. All right, so I'm going to drive out to approximately where she says it's happening. And we'll just see uh, if we can get any strange, significant noise out of this thing. So just driving down this bump area, bumpy road, I'm not really hearing anything strange. About to get out onto the highway. So I'm getting a, a bit of a kind of a whirring kind of noise right now. Um, it sounds more like a tire. I, I wouldn't say it's excessively noisy in any, any way. Okay, I'm definitely hearing something. Quite heavy and deep. I don't know how well the mic's going to pick it up. There's uh, some resonance through the car. That's uh, quite strange. <laughs> Honest with you. Okay, with some more speed, it's getting excessively worse. Um, okay, I, uh, first first suspicion is I, I got to check the wheels, and I uh, I should probably just turn around and. This is the first sign, if you've ever had a wheel come loose, this is the, kind of the first signs of it, and I don't play like that. If I think a wheel's coming loose, I, I just, I get over. There's no point in uh, something like that happening. And I mean loose by, uh, I don't mean the wheel's actually loose, but I got I got a feeling there's a couple loose wheel nuts, or a loose, the wheel's starting to loosen. Um, uh, but that you know that's just first suspicion so uh, we're gonna head back right now and I don't hear anything at low speed but just to be safe there's no sense in get a little bit of noise in the back there a little bit of grumbling in the back there's no point in losing a wheel and causing a wreck, an accident for no reason. 
So it's right at about 80 kilometers an hour, 50 mile an hour that you start to get this noise. Yeah, something, something's happening here. I can start to feel it in the wheel more. So I have, I have worked on this car before, uh, but I just, I put a muffler on it for her. I do have a video up of that, and I'll, I'll, I'll link it at the end of this video. This seems to be gone already, and I'm already starting to feel confident again. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna head back to my garage, and I'm gonna have a better look at these tires, definitely torque all wheels, and maybe have to go for another drive. And, and, and check it out again. I don't feel it anymore, it's gone. I'm not too far from, from home, so I'll be there in a second. So I've done some pretty easy check overs. I've basically wrapped my hands around the tires to feel for any lumpiness, the overall condition of the tires front to rear. Uh, they're, they're good hand cooks, they're not very old. They must She must have had to put them on this past summer. Um, the wheels are torqued all the way around. I went around with the torque wrench. They're all tight. Um, so I'm starting to wonder about a possible center diff or rear prop shaft, rear propeller shaft or drive shaft. Maybe one of the U-joints is starting to hang up after it gets a little heated up. It's something, it's something, uh, it's something strange and something that's thrown the car completely into a small little shimmy or shake um, but it's it doesn't seem to be tire balance at all uh, it really r seems to resonate from the actual drivetrain so I uh, I'm gonna go for another drive I don't want to waste her fuel you know just driving it but um, to see if I can just get a better idea and uh, see if I can't make a good recommendation. I do not throw parts on cars. If I don't find the problem, generally I don't get involved with it. If I feel that it's safe and it's usable, it's not going to break down on them, I'll request them to continue driving it. And usually the problem will worsen and it becomes very easy to identify. Okay, so I'm back out on the highway. I just started out on the highway. No noise yet. Yeah, I, can, I start to get a little bit of noise. The, the buzzing noise in the back's happening again. And I think it's caused from the resonation in the car starting to happen. So if I if I if I accelerate, I can get it quite heavy, and when I'm, then when I let off at the same speed, I mean it's causing a lot of noise. There's something definitely going on in the drivetrain. There, it's really heavy there. Uh, it it really does sound like a, like a bad tire, but it's it's definitely not a tire. Uh, it's way too heavy. It's pronounced through the whole car. I, th I think I hear it more in the back. Besides that buzzing noise, that it's not a consistent hum. It's a, it's like a, it's like a propeller or a helicopter. It's really. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm leaning more towards a uh, U-joint on that shaft. Hmm. That's not an easy one. Getting a little bit of torque vibration out of the steering wheel as I'm... Uh... Wow! Wow, the vibration in the car right now is shaking the camera! Like it feels like the wheel's coming loose again. Whoa, it's so heavy. Like it feels like someone just took all the wheel weights off the car. Even the steering wheel shaking.
it's uh, it's completely gone again. We're going the same speed, <laughs> same amount of load. We're at this almost the same speed, and I hear a little humming, but I don't hear any helicopters following me, and uh, the car's nice and smooth again. So it's a it's certainly an intermittent problem, uh, which is not common with mechanical issues. So yeah, the first time out, I didn't really hear anything. Second time out, I could hear kind of what was going on. And this time, man, it really, uh, really made some noise and some vibration. So I'm back in the garage. I've got it backed up onto the ramps. I'm gonna check the rear diff oil and maybe reach down and see if I can check the trans level too. And uh, while I'm under there, I'm gonna, I don't know, look at the shaft. There's not a whole lot you can do with it when it's in there and attached. Um, but if it looks heavily corroded or any kind of problem with it, then maybe I'll notice, but I, I doubt it. The problem's intermittently happening, so I don't expect to visually see a problem with it. So we're obviously set up underneath the car here. I'm gonna try and keep my head out of the camera's view. And we got a fill plug, drain plug. So I just wanna pop out the fill plug. And I'm gonna dip my finger in there. And I don't, I mean, the car is on a little bit of an angle. Some of the fluid's gonna run a little bit more forward. It might appear a little bit lower than what it should be. But my main concern is the how close it is to the fill plug to indicate how fill, filled up it might be. And then the actual condition of it. If, if it's quite dark, shows any shine, not a good thing. These tiny little diffs, they only take like I don't know, it's maybe a 0.7 or 0.8 of a liter, not even quite quite a quart. And there's definitely oil in there. It doesn't appear to be It doesn't appear to be uh, broken down very badly or low. So I would assume this has been changed at some point. She's been, she is really good on the maintenance from what I can tell. So make sure we tighten this up good. And uh, I might just squeeze under here and, I don't know, have a good look at that shaft. So I mean, I had a good look at the shaft from underneath the car, but you can't really tell anything. It's even hard to look up at the because there is a hanger bearing on this on this rear propeller shaft. The exhaust is relatively in the com completely in the way of getting that shaft out, and I don't know if you can squeeze them out with out dropping the exhaust. But I got a feeling even if I can get the exhaust to lower down a bit, I should be able to get the shaft out. So I've got the rear diff checked. I've got the drive shaft basically looked at, and it's something I might recommend. But I would just thinking what are the odds I, I'm just kind of beating a dead horse here and the car's actually got a stuck caliper right it'll give you some strange highway vibration it could be intermittently on and off because of brakes you know kind of coming to rest and the pads actually falling off the rotor and the rotor not necessarily warped but it's run out just out a little bit so that if a ro if a caliper was to seize on that rotor you'd actually get some heavy vibration possibly. Um, so what I like to do after a nice highway run like that, I'll come around to the wheels and first just feel for general heat. You don't ever want to put your hand on that brake rotor. Uh, you'll burn yourself really good. Uh, maybe just tap in here, depending on how hot you can feel it. I can actually put my hand on that, which indicates uh, Either it's not really doing much or something else is doing a lot of work and right away I just put my hand the back of my hand to this spoke and it's hot it's pretty hot so when I 
look a little further and get some heat spots on that rotor. The rotor doesn't look terribly old. It's definitely got some rust on it, but not a lot of rust buildup. The caliper's old, probably original, and that pad looks very low. A lot of heat. To the point I probably won't... Yeah, like I can't leave my hand on the caliper. On this side, as you can see, someone's replaced this caliper at some point. And the wheel, nice and cool, the caliper's cool, everything's cooled down a bit, the, the rotor's still quite warm, but uh, appears to be a little bit more pad material on the side. So instead of taking a whole pile of money and trying to pull out a rear shaft and finding out if it's good or not, and maybe buying a shaft to try it in the car just to see if I can solve this issue. I'm going to take care of a known issue. So that, that going after that brake caliper first and doing a front brake job may be the way to correct this problem. And because the car already needs those parts, I know the pads are low. I know that caliper's overheated and seized on. That it's best we take care of that issue before taking care of anything else because it could be directly related to what's going on and just doing that one uh, repair that should be done because it is brakes and I'm actually surprised that I don't feel that caliper sticking when I drive the car but um, I would say that uh, I'm gonna have to start there and then if if the problem goes past that brake caliper okay well if the car needed a brake caliper I won't feel so bad for replacing it and we'll chase after the, the the vibration and continue on with it. It's not going to be an easy one if it's not the caliper. But uh, I, I feel that it's you know safe enough to drive, and uh, they could go out on the highway and not really have a a problem. Uh, the the situation will just worsen. I don't think it's going to get to the point where it, it's going to break down and leave them on the side of the highway. Um, but I'll kind of leave that decision up to them. I'll let them know what I found and we'll, we'll try and attack it in steps. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.